Hi guys, my name is Meads. This is going to be a review for Sentinel's Armorized Iron Man. Pretty awesome figure. <laughs> yeah, when I first saw this, uh, it looks amazing from the promo picture. I really like that design. Now, um, I, I really like Iron Man, but I'm not a big fan to the point that I know every mark uh, or design that he created. Or even, I haven't really read the comics other than what I've seen in the movies or cartoons. So my, <laughs> my knowledge in Iron Man is quite limited. But you know, who, who can like, like Iron Man? He's an amazing uh, character. So this is my first figure from Sentinel. I've been buying their mecha and robots. I'm a big fan of Sentinel. Um, in terms of price point, you're probably looking at around 100 bucks for this. And I was actually kind of considering getting the Hurricane Polymar, which I might later on. And how do you how do you price this? This is around 100 bucks. Would you consider this a high-end collectible? Uh, we know that there's hot toys of uh, Iron Man, which are around 300, 200 to 300 dollars. So I would guess it's kind of like the mid-range because there are figures that you can get from like, your local hobby stores, they're like below 50 bucks. And yeah, so this I'm just gonna consider this mid-range <laughs> collectible. Still kind of pricey though. All right, I think that's pretty much it for the box. Let's take a look inside. And here's the packaging. I just want to quickly go over it. Um, it's kind of like an overlay. This part here where the, all the armors are in behind it. Ah, very interesting. I'm looking around it. There is no base for this particular figure. Um, which is quite surprising since Sentinel always provide a, the, their standard base. Which I really like. It's kind of like a grid uh, like a base. Now let's take qu uh, quickly go over the instruction booklet. Gonna give us an overview. How things are pegged in there we go and apparently they have uh, kind of like the Figma style and Revoltec they're really <laughs> uh, what do you call this uh, working on those eyes so it's kind of like the same setup I wonder if that's patented or something it's, it's the same thing with the Revoltec and Figma hmm, interesting and they also tell you that when you're doing the up crunch, make sure the abs are inside, not out. Else you might break a joint. And it seems like you can uh, extend the waist and the hip joint, which is good. It gives it more, uh, more dynamic poses. And uh, pretty much the lineup for the armor. And there we go. Alright. Alright, so we got the naked Iron Man here. <laughs> Uh, let's just quickly go over it. Um, in terms of diecast part, it, it's kind of heavy. <laughs> I'm not sure if the gold pieces are diecast, or maybe they just added. Actually, the feet feels like a diecast. Huh. Sentinel did uh, like this part here. Kind of feels like a diecast. I'm just gonna assume that all the gold pieces are die cast, but they've done in uh, previously that they just painted uh, gold on the plastic, which I really like because it makes the figure a lot lighter and a lot more poseable. Die cast really weighs down a figure, so not really, comp uh, not much complaints there. But this one, it's it's heavy, but not heavy enough to weigh it down. Well, we don't have the armor yet. All right, so uh, let's go quickly with articulation. And there goes the head, which is, I believe, interchangeable. And uh, we kind of see the eyes there. Uh, let's see. I'm not going to play around with it. <laughs> it's the same as uh, the other character. I mean, the Figma and Revoltech. But it doesn't really give you much clearance, uh, as you can see there, because of the top part. Yeah. And from the tip, there's no um, kind of like a pocket where you can um, move it. So you're, you are pretty much wiggling it around or trying to get that to move. Alright, so uh, that's a unique peg system. There we go. So you can't really move it that much. You you can rotate because of this peg. Huh, maybe I'm just not doing it correctly. And getting this back there. There we go. Alright, there we go. Um, on the torso, not much. Uh, you can uh, rotate this on that ball joint right there. You get a swivel, double jointed uh, elbow. There we go. And I believe uh, we have uh, 
three pairs of hands. So that's that's great. And I really like how they did this one. The flap is not on the forearm, it's on the hand itself. Yes, I'm really happy for that. Because the ones I have for Revoltech and Figma, not good. Alright, so we got the torso here and you can uh, move it up, give you more. That's really nice. I mean, even on the back, it's not too bad. There we go. That's a really nice. Kind of makes you wonder if they make Spider-Man. <laughs> We're in a joint system. That's it's a lot of hollow parts there, but it's not too bad. And I believe you can extend this, uh, or maybe you can just uh, lower it down. There we go. I mean, I don't think there's really much you can uh, do with that joint than your standard uh, waist. Yeah. Right, and uh, we got the knee, you got a separate armor, or separate knee piece here, which is great. It's not too bad. Though kind of wish it's, it's a little bit, but then again, we're going to put the armor. We'll see how that turns out. Then you have the ankle here, which seems to be stuck. There we go. Got to be careful on those uh, joint. So uh, I'm looking at this, just plastic. It's not one of those screw type. And you be uh, you gotta be careful when you're loosening it up the first time. It is quite tight for some reason. Then you gotta get a toe joint. There we go. Now, I wonder if that's magnet, magnetized. Because that means you can use... No, they're not magnetized, they're just painted on. But I think you can put the magnets in there, huh? I'm gonna give that a try. It's always good to have magnetized effect parts. Anyways, that's it for the base figure. Uh, let's start putting on the armor. Alright, let's start with the chest. I'm just going to go over um, how it is in destruction. So here we go. It's a little different from this one. This one has that plain of white. And uh, this one kind of has like a grid. And I think that's just how it's uh, etched on the plastic on, uh, uh, on the other side. Which is nice. Now we got pegs here. And uh, <laughs> I just dropped it. Uh, it is die cast. I can feel the weight on it. Here we go. Um, I don't think it uh, pegs it. There's no uh, kind of like a clip. So it's good. It's both good and bad. <laughs> and here's the back side. Here we go. Just matching it. We got two pegs. Or actually three. Just, uh, and it just kind of holds in there. There we go. Uh, next part will be huh. uh, let's see the shoulder armor, which is right here. Now this one just have a, a peg on both ends and just slides in. There we go. Now one of my concern is the paint, because we are sliding it with the paint, and I'm really hoping that that doesn't. Uh, do, do much damage later on. Now this one has a hinge which just claps on here and there's a kind of like like a button there which uh, goes on here I believe. If I'm getting this correctly. Um, how the, oh yeah it's right there. There we go and we'll just clasp this on. There we go. That should uh, stay in place. Now next part is we have to remove this joint and uh, put on the sleeve which is right here. This one just goes in here. And uh, there was like a peg here that kind of I believe holds it in place. There we go. Now next part is we just put back the hand. All right. Now uh, we have this side thing here, which uh, there's a just a hinge, which just I believe just pegs in there. Now uh, just try to be careful putting this on. 
and what do you know it does actually paint off I just chipped the paint <laughs> great how else are you going to put this on there we go um, I chipped the paint on the side I really don't know how else see I'm kind of concerned now if you remove this one Okay, the metallic part seems to hold fairly well, but uh, the brown part doesn't. So, I guess once you put it on there, that's it. You know, just, just a heads up. It's not too bad because, again, I chipped off the underside. Oh. Um, let's put back the hand on. Just kind of wish the whole thing's just metallic. <laughs> All right, next part, we got to remove, uh, let's see how we're going to do this. We got to put the leg sleeve, so we're going to remove the knee part. Oh man, jeez. Let's put this on later on. <laughs> That's not a stable connection. All right, uh, another thing that, well, it's metallic, so it should be fine. All this plastic to plastic and the paint geez all right we got that on and uh huh we're gonna put this on it says here it uh detaches into two but uh i'm figuring how how does it detach all right let me figure this out all right so uh, this actually kind of has a hinge system see the plastic there kind of goes on the circular part and so over here there's kind of like a little bit of thing you can put your nails on or I wouldn't use uh, any screwdriver you might uh, end up uh, chipping off the paint so basically you just kind of push this out and there's kind of like a hinge system there um, just Kind of push it out of the way, get it out. There we go. Now uh, this one just goes on this leg here. Actually, I think they wanted to put the back side first. There we go. Just cradles there quite nicely. And I'll put this on. Uh, likewise, we're just going to go. I mean, you do have a little bit of a wiggle room there. There we go, and goes on top. All right, now the last part is this one. Um, again, it's not fully painted. You can tell that's die cast. <laughs> um, on the other side, you don't really need uh, to worry much. I mean, if it's not painted, that's okay. Goes up there. There we go. And let's put this back on. All right. Come on. How come it's not going? Oh, it's actually diecast inside. That's what I've been feeling. All right, so this is just painted on. There's actually the diecast inside. I don't know if you guys can see that. Yeah, the, the paint is like silver inside or the diecast piece. All right, mystery solve. There we go. So yeah, this is not too bad having that uh, knee guard there. Kind of wish that was painted, but then again, that's where you removed it, and then paint might scrape off. Oh, jeez. <laughs> All right, uh, let me finish the other side. All right, so I got a problem here. And you already see a bit of paint chipping. It's when you kind of lower it down, it scrapes off that again, uh, this brown color. Now, surprisingly, when I take this out, this joint here, this whole thing here, I think half the peg is die cast. Got a bit of paint chipping. You can see the silver. Now, this other one seems to be plastic, and apparently mine. So this, the peg going in here, which allows me to do a, a wide stand pose, is stuck. Now I can uh, 
maybe I need to heat this up or something. Something I can try, but yeah, it, it's not working. And I don't want to force it because that's a half pack joint. And as most half pack joints are, it has a tendency to break. And if that's broken, that's going to be a problem. Anyways, just want to share that. Um, so you do, you will have, you can have a bit of paint chipping there, but I don't think it's going to be much problems. It's going to be cover up the arm, outer armor. All right, as persistent as I am, I tried the hair blower technique. Um, pretty much put it in high blast for a good 30, 45 seconds till it heats up. Now again, this is die guy. It's going to heat up pretty quick. The idea is um, I really just want to free in that part there. Now, I managed to do that. I managed to paint, uh, chip some more paint on that one, which you know, I don't really mind. Actually, I think it'll be better if that's silver there. Gonna give, or maybe gold. Anyways, um, I'm just going to demonstrate this. You heard that click? Yeah. There we go. So I can do, a, it's kind of like a Revoltec joint. There's a certain click. It's not, I'm not sure if the paint inside just making it ratchet. But that's much as I can do. Now it's free. Yeah, that's all that <laughs> matters. Yeah. So be careful on that one. Um, you can try again the hair blower uh, you know, or hair dryer technique you know, just to warm up that joint. There we go. And uh, let's put back this. Kind of just see how much the damage is. So again, you're not going to be seeing it as much since you're going to be covering it up. But um, as other uh, figure collectors out there, articulation is everything sometimes. And you just want to have everything in there. <laughs> there we go. So again, even though that's chipped off, you know, you're not going to see it much with uh, this armor on. But it's important to have that articulation. Well, at least for me. All right, let's put everything together. All right, got almost everything there. Just got to replace the head with this one. Now, this one seems like the front plate is die cast. Um, otherwise, the rest of it is uh, just plastic. Which is not too bad. All right, putting this on. Getting that thing there. Now, it's kind of weird. How does this, his face, uh, fit in that uh, helmet? It makes you wonder if the helmet should be a little bit bigger. Alright, a quick comparison with the Figma Iron Man. Sadly, I don't have the Revoltech uh, with me. Uh, the armor is the uh, Iron Man is about 7 inch. The Figma is roughly a little over 6 inches. And there we go. Alright, then uh, last but not least, we got the hands. So, um, other than a closed fist, we got a couple ones, um, which the open uh, hand. And uh, you have one that's just kind of holding something. Kind of wish there's more, like a pointing finger or you know, thumbs up or something. <laughs> All right, so let's just uh, interchange them. And it's one of those. Yep. We have to. Uh, it's first time. I wonder if I have to make the peg hole bigger. Huh. Jeez. Alright, let me do that first. Alright, I got it in. Just kind of widen the joint. Now, a few things I've uh, noticed while putting it on. When you're pu pushing it, it in, it's actually great that they don't have the arm guard there. Aside from the closed fist. So they've removed that, which allows you to hold it up. Which, you don't really need that uh, backhand armor. Yep, um, another thing I've noticed is that as you push this in, you have a tendency to push this back out. Now, you gotta be careful because as it pegs back in here, there's a groove. That little groove there that slides in. And, well, I actually noticed that the plastic one, the paint on it sticks really well. But if it's a die cast like we were seeing on the joint on the ankle, it, it peels off easily because it doesn't have the traction on the die cast. But can can never be uh, too careful. So just be careful when you slide that back and make sure that groove 
matches that plastic. And likewise, same thing. As you remove this shoulder here, you got to be careful with that clearance. There we go. Because this is, I believe, uh, well, it doesn't feel like die cast. But uh, certain parts, you just never know. It might be a die cast piece and you're going to be scraping out paint and you're going to be... <sighs> it's not good. Um, yeah. Otherwise, he looks amazing. The head sculpt, quite nice. Kind of has that retro look. I really liked it, hence I picked this. Um, it's pre-panel lined, which is great. I'm seeing in that armor. Yeah, overall, this is just pretty cool. I like this. And the double joint, you know, that's great. Although, I kind of don't like that hinge there. I'm not sure why they have that hinge. Um, they could have easily done it the same thing with the name. We just pull off the whole arm, but... Then again, I'm not sure how well that goes with the integrity of the armor. Or the whole uh, elbow joint. Now, another thing I want to point out. I kind of wish it seems more gold here. Uh, there's a lot of gold underneath. I kind of wish uh, this certain parts here are hollow. But... Uh, I guess in terms of Iron Man, Iron Man design, it's just a bit of uh, the upper leg and uh, upper arm. But uh, overall, I like the design of this. Pretty amazing. I would highly recommend pick this up. The Armorized Iron Man by Sentinel. And I'm probably just going to keep it on this mode. Um, there's really no point of removing the armor. Or maybe partial of it, but still. Just going to keep it at this. And that's pretty much it for the review. If you have any questions, let me know. But till then, this is Pete's. Oh, before we, I almost forgot. I did notice on the underside of the hinge. Before I forgot, it does says Marvel here. Another flap, side skirt. Same thing here. I almost forgot. <laughs> All right, I think that's pretty much it. Um, yep. So until then, this is Pete's. Thanks for watching.